So, I just finished We Need a Little Christmas. And, <laughs> um, these are the first ever Christmas earrings that I made. This little abstract Christmas tree that looks like a six-year-old made it on top of this little thing. Um, but perfect for, you know, my first Christmas movie review of the season. So, I loved this movie. I knew I was going to like this movie because I like Erica Durant. I love uh, Patrick Sabungi. I, uh, Lit, Lynn Woodfield. Like, I knew I was, I, there was no way I was going to, like, dislike the movie, but, like, I absolutely love this movie. And I have to say, spoiler alert, because I'm going to do, this is not a really big spoiler alert, because I'm going to do all four of the reviews on this video. Um, spoiler alert, unless something crazy happens in a Kismet Christmas to change my mind, this is going to be my number one movie of the weekend. Um, very straightforward. A widowed mom raising a little kid. This is the same little kid who was in, I looked him up. He was in a movie with Ryan Pavey and completely blanking on who the female was, but it wasn't very good. But it was a Christmas movie last year that had something to do with Ryan Pavey, a hotel. Um, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I had to go look up the name of it, but I don't think it did too well in my rankings. Anyway, um, so, uh, you know, she's got this little kid and they have, you know, just this past year lost her husband, his dad, and they've just moved and they, Lynn Whitfield is the neighbor and they, the kids having a hard time of, you know, as you do when you lose a parent. And, uh, he goes to this, like, Christmas, like, day camp. And Lynn Whitfield is there, like, volunteering. Like, they've seen her, just, like, waved at her or whatever, but haven't really met her yet. And so they become friends. And then, eventually, um, Erica's character and she become friends. And, um, they wind up basically helping each other out without any spoilers for the holidays. And uh, Patrick is a restaurant owner whose restaurant she just winds up going into and it turns out he wants to get some work done. She's in, in architectural design. And so that's how their relationship begins. And it's just like so sweet. Like there's nothing in the movie that's like contrived, you know? It's just like, it's very straightforward. It's very sweet it's very Christmassy it's just full of love and friendship and sweetness and kindness and um, I even got all teared up at one point watching it I think it's just an absolute delight you know good script good acting and bravo bravo fantastic so um, yeah uh, five stars obviously and uh, definitely go watch this one of everything that came out this weekend. If you were only going to be like, I'm only going to watch one Hallmark movie a week or <laughs> even that sounds crazy because it is October. Um, this would be the one that I would say to watch. And you'll know why as I go on with the other movies. But anyway, I'll be back for the next review. Next up, I got to do it. I got to get it over with. And I haven't wanted to do this. <sighs> we wish you, wish you, we wish you a Merry Christmas. This was the one that was supposed to come in number one for the weekend. If not, you know, in my top 10 for the year. And I'm so sad to say, I found it very disappointing. I found it a bit of a schlog. And it's very hard to explain why. You know I love Chris Plaha. It's one of my favorites. He's like in my top, top, top four or five Hallmark guys. And so I went into this with high hopes. 
And the guy who directed this did a Dickens of Holiday last year, which I loved, which was like not my number four, I think, for the year. And the person who wrote this, I already forgot some stuff that she wrote. But I want to say that she's written some stuff that I've liked. And, but also she wrote Chateau Christmas, which I uh, was a snooze fest. I can't even remember if I finished that one because I don't think that was last year. I think it was the year before when I wasn't committing to like watching the whole thing, regardless if I liked it or not. Um, and that had Luke McFarland and I didn't like it. So, and I feel like there might've been some others. Oh, she did Presence of Love. She wrote Presence of Love, which I loved. Um, anyway, I'll try to throw up some stuff here that they've done. So, you know, I'm genuinely like sad about it. I know, it's so, I know this isn't real life and this is Hallmark, but Marisol Nichols, I think that she could be part of it for me. I'm not, she's fine, but she's definitely not one of my favorites. And I'm not sure what it is. I feel like, um, I don't know, like I didn't buy them. I didn't buy them as a couple. I didn't buy them as a couple and been together for a long time. I don't know if someone else could have been in that role and made it better. Um, I'm sad to say that her eyebrows distract me a lot. Like she has thick eyebrows and there's nothing wrong with having thick eyebrows. But then on top of that, like... I feel like there's a lot of, um, you know, like eyebrow pencil or something to the point where it distracts me and that's just her look and that's her thing and there's nothing wrong with it and she's, be she's a beautiful woman, but there's something about it that for me distracts me and constantly pulls me out of what she's in, at least in this particular movie. Um, don't remember having this issue with Christmas CEO, but, um, which I think is the one she was in, right? I don't know. It's just the tone of the movie. Tonally, it's very, um, it's not, okay, let me, the scenes with the two of them, I already said in the preview, married couple, marriage counselor sends them to this town where it turns out the marriage counselor, this isn't a big spoiler, sends other couples to this town to like try to reconnect with each other. So that's what they're doing. So, Tonally, it's gray and slow because you're trying to capture this, you know, couple who are going through hard times and trying to reconnect and stuff. So I get that, right? But it made me like the people in this town, like the two, um, it's a dude and his husband who are running the inn love them. There's a lady named Kayla who paints animal portraits, who's one of the people in town that we see, really liked her. There's this cute little waiter who has a crush on her. Um, and like, I enjoyed them and like, would want to watch the movie that involved them in this town but with like a different main couple in this town. I mean, it even had alpacas in it. It even had alpacas because there's like an alpaca farm and a lady who makes like little videos where the alpacas mouths are like moving because they're like eating raisins or something. And then she's like talking. So it looked like well, they're alpaca grams or something. So like, even with that, it couldn't, save it and it's so what such a bummer like i'm just i don't know i was looking on the socials and stuff and i saw people in my hallmark groups like talking about it too and not really you know having some of the same issues that i was having as far as it just being kind of slow and stuff so anyway Yeah, I wouldn't watch it again. Like, if it came on, I wouldn't want to see this again. So, I'm just going to have to go two and a half. I can't give it three stars. So, it's a real bummer. And, um, 
I don't remember if there's another Chris Ballon movie coming out this season. And I really wish that there was going to be because, um, yeah. But you know what? In defense of the movie, I wasn't in a great mood either where I watched it. So maybe I should watch it again at some point. It's not going to be anytime soon because I have too many other movies to watch. But, um, I don't know. Let me know what you think about this one because I wanted to like it like a lot. So anyway, on to the next one. Noel Next Door. I enjoyed this movie a lot more than I thought I was going to. I went in there, I think, with medium to low expectations. I love Natalie Hall. Um, You're Baking Me Crazy is such a fun movie. And um, this movie was pretty adorable, I have to say. Like, there was something about the two of them together. Uh, Natalie Hall and Corey Sevier, they have this real fun chemistry, in my opinion. Um, I really enjoyed him. I don't think I've ever, like I think I had already said, I, I don't think I've seen anything all the way through that he was in. But I enjoyed him a lot. He does play something of a curmudgeon, and I think I'm kind of a sucker for a, curm a curmudgeon sometimes. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers as to how, what the situation is in the movie. So you just kind of have to see for yourself. But um, I'm going to make this one really quick. Like, it's, it's, it's a cute little romance. I really enjoyed it. Um, she's great. I want to see more of her. I want to see more of him. Um, the guy who plays her kid is cute. Um, there were th some parts in here where like that were kind of cartoonish as far as like um she goes on a blind date with a guy who is like cartoonishly terrible um sh he goes on a blind date with a lady who is also cartoonishly terrible like he has um had a stroke this is not i don't think that's a spoiler i think we find that out very early on so he walks with a cane and he has like a, this his arm is stiff and he was trying to get his coat off and the lady was like why don't you just leave it on you're making a scene and i was like oh my god like could, would somebody really be like that like the person who set them up wouldn't he have said like fyi you know he does walk with a cane and he has like he's had a stroke and you know so what I just didn't believe it like it was it took me out of the movie for a minute because she was so terrible and uh the same with the ladies blind date um that she goes on so but other than that whatever i mean you know i thought it was super cute i would totally put it on again um yeah I was very pleasantly surprised with how adorable it was so i'm gonna go ahead and give this one I give a 3.75. Um, it's practically a 4 because it was really, really cute. But I'm coming off of what I consider a 5 star. Then it's about a, a star and a quarter down from that. So we're going to go 3.75 on this. And it's one of those, like, if you, you know, the one that I'm telling you go out of your way to watch is we need a little Christmas and then this one definitely I would say to watch it so uh yeah anyway uh that's all I got on that one so I just started a kismet Christmas and I'm well, I'm 12 minutes in and I'm having one of those things where I don't know if I'm going to like the lead because she just did something that was kind of, uh, I don't know, jerky. So the kismet thing is that her grandma, Mary Lou Hunter, lives in this house where her great grandparents used to live and her great grandmother was supposed to marry some rich guy in town, but um, she didn't want to. And she found the secret compartment in the house that had this recipe in it for these kismet cookies. And she made these cookies and she put one under her pillow and she dreamt of 
this grocer in town and then she went the next and I think in the recipe it says you put this under your pillow and then you're gonna have a dream of the per man of your dreams the person of your dreams whatever and then um yeah and so she had a dream about the grocer and she went and knocked on his door the next morning and said do you have anything to tell me and he did was that uh, which was that he had always loved her and then they lived happily ever after and so uh then we meet um so that's the story so the reason that we're even being told the story this is in a flashback because the main character is the children's book author who has to go back to her hometown or the town where her grandma grew up and she's telling her agent why that would be traumatic for her and telling him the story so she took a kismet cookie put it under her pillow and then she dreamt about carlo marx the neighbor who they show like when they're showing them in these flashbacks they're just kind of like this weirdly lit flashback I'm trying to make you look younger, light, mixed with weird makeup kind of thing, right? So <laughs> she dreams of him. We meet him for like a second as being the neighbor that she had had this crush on. And so she dreams of him and she tells Mary Lou Henner, I got to go tell him and Mary Lou Henner's trying to stop her, but did not try nearly hard enough because she literally goes, knocks on the door. He opens the door, even though he's in the middle of getting married in the living room of his house. As you do. So, um, so then she's like, these kids and cookies are bullshit, obviously, because that's what happened to me. And she's telling her agent this story and she's, oh, oh, oh. But then she comes back to the house and tells Mary, you know, she's super upset and she literally rips up the recipe, which I presume is the recipe that like has been in the family since Mary Lou Henner's great grandmother was, you know, young which would be like a long time ago and she ripped it up because the, the kismet cookie like was bullshit for her <sighs> anyway so then she's sitting there and she's telling the agent about this and she's like basically like i heard they moved to florida i haven't been back since and i'm thinking you haven't even been back to visit your grandmother because of this and i'm just like you're just sounding like kind of a jerk right now is the, the whole where i'm going with this and I don't, you know, you can definitely wind up liking a movie, even if in the beginning you don't necessarily like the main character, because they can change or they can grow on you or whatever. So we'll see. But it's not terribly promising way to start a movie, in my opinion. So um, let me go watch some more and see what I think. You peel potatoes? Yeah. Where'd you peel potatoes? Okay, well, I'm gonna. I'm doing my review right now, so that's actually on the video. Is that okay with you? No. You don't care. Yeah, no, I don't. Anyway, so yeah, I just finished a Kismet Christmas. I thought you were like recording. I'm literally recording right now. I'm talking to my kid in the kitchen. Anyway, um, I got you know what, guys? I don't know. Like, I'm tired, so that doesn't help. It's been a long work week, and it's only been two days. Granted, my work days are long but still um I don't know you know it was a movie it was there being a movie and um I didn't hate it like how I was concerned I was going to hate it in the beginning because I thought that the lead character was kind of acting like a jerk because she tore up the recipe and I can't remember if I said that for the kismet cookies and but i didn't hate the movie i didn't hate it it was fine um i don't know like literally i kind of think if i had to watch this or the chris palaha movie again i'd probably watch this one like there's you know it was it was more better than that one so <laughs> i'm so tired Anyway, no, but it was more better. I mean, you know. I like Carlo Marx. Uh, he's he's cute, and it's got Mary Lou Henner, you know. The lady, I can take her or leave her. The kid was cute. Um, the girl who played his kid is cute. You know, put it on, fold the laundry, wrap some presents when it's actually Christmas time, something like that. So, um, 
yeah, a little boring, but um, I can't remember what I, how many stars. I can't get into giving stars because it's just, then I have to remember how many stars I gave other things. So I'm, I'm just going to skip it and say, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it was fine. It was okay. Let me know what you thought. And um, yeah, as usual, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Okay, see you next week. Well, this week for some more movies. Okay, bye.